if she, see, the Mars could get a little cranky or tired or edgy or cranky, you guys trying to do too much or getting tired, but she has too much of a style to allow herself to get cranky. She's just getting busy and fix things. You wouldn't be quick to complain to others. This is also, the sixth house is also the house of discipleship. Um, Dane Ruder in his book, The Astrological Houses, a spectrum of, of, of individual experience. It's one of the nicest house, books on the houses, the most insightful. This is the house of discipleship. When you're trying to improve yourself and you set a standard with someone, you take a teacher or someone who you knows already established a master and you're learning how to improve your life so you can live up to be like the master. So this is also the help of discipleship. So when you think spiritually and visionarily, she could be a designer, she could, she's a real estate agent, she could design, she could build her own place. She'd have the, she really have the ability to do that. But she also has this mystical side of knowing healing things. The house of the chart of the healer is the sun in the sixth house. With the Mars and the Venus, having healing things to help other people heal things. That's really good. Astrology being a healing advice works really well with this and she'll add some other things. But again, the Mars not afflicted, it's it's gonna work that way. So she's gonna accomplish, she's gonna get a, be able to fix a lot of things and do a lot of things. Even though uh, the career, you're gonna think of it as the career, but even aside from that, she has many things she's capable of, which makes it relatively easier for her to maintain a career. Okay. When we get to Jupiter, Jupiter's the help, the point of understanding. It's assimilating all the experience of everything I can do. I can do this, I can do this. I'm trying to understand everything. I want to understand, I can see what I need to do. I can see what I'm doing. Let's go for it. Let's, I, I'll, I'll do more for you. I'll adjust this, I'll take care of this, I'll take care of this. So she can always be taking care of too much until she's getting exhausted. But the Jupiter is her understanding of her aggression, understanding I, if I work at this, I'll get the things I want things like that. But the Jupiter, it squares her moon. So it's hard to justify or understand exactly everything that one wants. I can see it, but there's easier to compromise. There's challenges of understanding. So with the past, with family, with home, and the Jupiter is conjunct by Pluto. So it means there's challenges and confrontations over what's right and wrong. So how she was brought up, how she was as a kid at home, the power struggles and contradictions around her understanding, fights over what's right or wrong with her own kids. There's a strong fight over this has to be right, not wrong. She's going to be really strong to have to fight for things to be right rather than wrong. Pluto on it. But if she started to go to the dark side, went towards what was wrong, Pluto would be there and people, people, kids, family would be controlling her life, filling up the house, dealing with so it's not making it pleasant. So she's always struggling with her understanding between these two sides, where I belong, where I don't on the seesaw, between trying to belong more with the, with the pattern faith and feeling suckered or over in, or oppressed by family and other things that are where I do belong, other things that are pressing me and trying to get out of it where I place where I might belong. If I get out of this, where could I belong? You know, like, or what do I do? So this Jupiter struggling is gonna come out in a creative way. It's gonna come out in a romantic way, so the struggle around kids, around what's right or wrong, around what one has to do when I have to take care of things, so I can't let it fall apart like this. But you know, there will be challenges, whether it's from the husband, whether it's from a lover, whether it's from the kids, there's gonna be challenges around how she's supposed to live and people making demands on her that might be inconsiderate. And she's trying to help, trying to help, but she's having to understand, wait a second, who's deserving and who's not. What can I do? What can I do? So because the Pluto hits the Jupiter in the fifth house, she has the understanding and the opportunity for understanding and to be creative with it, fifth house in Leo, to have a style, but because Pluto's there, I'm not gonna be the fine artist. I'll do it in a practical way. I'll do it in a business way, in a style. With a, I'll make it a certain style that goes along with what I'm doing. Restraints in the sixth house. So the Pluto, Jupiter in the fifth house, confrontation over to her understanding, it's affecting the moon and the Saturn. So struggles with family, with parents, with in-laws, could be any of those things. 
they're going to be a challenge around it. And she's going to be, she can know you very well socially. I mean, you know, but be difficult to get close to her in a personal world. That's a separate area where there's battles that she has to fight. And that's a stronger determined side that her moon, this is her fixed, her fixed moon and the Jupiter, fixed Jupiter and Pluto. This is the way it is, this is what I have, I have to deal with this. And that's her cross, her T-square to bear. So outwardly, everyone sees the, the beautiful thing and the good, perfectly capable person. Personally, you don't see the difficulty she has to deal with, with with home and family. She carries that somewhat invisibly, or it's two different worlds. And it's almost like a piece of it's a bowl going this way, then trying to fix the other, having to come back, take care of this. It's the, and having the idealism and the understanding goes along. Now, for a spiritual path, that's a very strong thing because it really forces one to be truthful and honest in one's integrity, one's honesty. So on a spiritual level, that really enforces good teaching. If she gets good teaching, she has to live up to it. But she can't necessarily expect family or brothers or sisters to live up to the same understanding. You're into astrology? You do what? That's probably the work of the devil. But um, she's not a quitter. She's determined she can take an awful lot of pressure. She can take, she's a reacting threat. This, so she can justify why she has to put up with difficult things, perhaps to a fault, where she takes, puts up a lot of stuff way more than she should. The should is part of the Jupiter. But the challenge here is to be creative, to find ways of playing with this, take care of kids, but also to be playful, maybe to travel. Maybe she gets that from traveling, does a fair amount of traveling. Not all over the place, she travels between two different houses. That's a kind of nice to burn the fifth. I can see that. I can perform there, I can take care of things here, have the two worlds. It's traveling, but as much as a tourist moon would allow her. It's not like recklessly traveling. <clears throat> okay. So the Pluto hits the Jupiter, they both gang up and hit on the on the Mars for understand family. What did I do this right? What should I do? What has to be taken care of? At the same time, the same understanding when it comes to closing a deal, someone that hasn't got a money, the money they gotta find fine this thing. This is someone can see here's this is desperate, we're gonna have to find this. Here's the other ways to find this all solve the finances to take care of this. She'd be sensitive to that. When other people become challenged, she's gonna know how to respond from having dealt with it herself. Other people are gonna relieve when she's there because she'll know how to other people to deal with it. This is the, again, a factor of cons 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 consulting and advising. Okay, when we get to Saturn, the Saturn sky, as we get to these other planets, the relationship with the sign is there, but you don't always see it without knowing some of the details, but you see the place in the houses and the aspects. So the Saturn in Scorpio, is the seriousness around trust, around commitments. She has moving towards commitment. She can be serious around it. And she's going to be sensitive to things. If, you know, if someone expects too much, is demanding too much, and isn't living up to expectations. Suppose the husband is, wants to live his own way and isn't reinforcing her. That would cause huge problems. That Saturn in Scorpio is going to be competitive, challenging, restraints, frustrations, repressions. And it's in the seventh house of relationships. So the Saturn relationship often in this the Capricorn in the seventh house, but Saturn in the seventh house often can imply an age factor in relationships. But there might be an older person that one relates to. Or um, it does also apply to sometimes restrictions in other ways around relationships. You're not so there's a tendency of commitments in relationships to be serious around again kind of depressions or difficult energy soon, and you're trying to react to it with the Mercury, you try to think what's going on and try and find a way of making it nice, even if it's unstable. But there's an inherent depression in that Saturn, which hits the moon and throws it over Jupiter. There's a restriction around relationships, how to deal with marriage, how to deal with the commitments. So she's game for commitments, and for, for marriages and commitments, but there's a certain amount of cost or demands. Is it real or is it real? How much time do you put in? How much do they add? What's happening? So on close quarters, she could be very insecure and inhibited and apply someone as being more authoritative and more bossier that she's responding to. But 
I know she has her own stuff, but there is this worry factor or serious factor around the relationship, some age, some serious factor around planning it. So if she was with someone and she, if one of her kids got sick, she'd make sure she took care of her kids. If one of her, if her partner wasn't doing so well, she'd take care of the partner. She would just naturally be inclined to do that, whether the partner took care of himself or not. So that's a hidden area. But the Saturn from the seventh house, it's, it's, it's not square by Pluto. It squares to Jupiter, which is a good sense of business timing. There's not really bad aspects between Saturn and Jupiter. But when they both pile up to the moon, when it goes to business, it sees clearly when it's asking for sympathy, asking for security or feeling secure, it's going to get tied up with business and there'll be a fight between what's domestic and what's business, what's family, with how to take care of both sides. Okay, this is the T-square to Saturn, Jupiter, Moon. This is the main T-square. When there's a T-square, two squares in opposition, and they're joined, I shade it in red so you can see this complex. Those planets will hold together. When transits, transits go along, as soon as it hits one, it's going to hit all three points. That All these things get hit at the same time. So there's always going to be things you can see when these major factors. So when we get the timings, we'll see when these things get triggered off and then you begin to see how someone deals with it. Right now you're seeing the potential of what someone's capable of. This is a nice person who'll go out of their way to help you and to do things for you. Even if she's really busy, has no time, she'll find a way of working a bit of time in. Okay, so the Saturn the seriousness is coming from the seventh house. Commitments, passions, demands of the husband, of the partner, an age factor, a restraint factor, um, a, a maturity factor, but also it can be certain worries or depressions that come and affect the moon. So I'm looking for feedback, but what happens if I'm in a situation that's not giving me good feedback? Well, you get the complications. 